Somebody said nothing ever happened down home round here. Somebody said nothing ever happened, never mattered here. Somebody said it's Gainesville, Georgia, what do you expect to see? Then a good old boy said Gainesville, Georgia's good enough for me. Now somebody said it's the second coming, someone said it's the first. Somebody said it's the best could happen, someone said it's the worst. And somebody said the rat rat's got some moonshine to your brain. Then a good old boy said the cotton grass gospel started down in Gainesville, Georgia. Something's brewing in Gainesville, wonder what it could be. Something's good in Gainesville, come on down and see. Gainesville, where the wise men went, turned the center stable to revival tent. It's a hell of a place to be, heaven sent. Gainesville bound for me. Well, it all started in Gainesville on the map. It's just a dot. Where well, the mystery of history is what Gainesville, Georgia got. Now you might find it hard to believe in a world that's going to pot. But we got the story of the crown and glory, believe it or not. Something's brewing in Gainesville, wonder what it could be. Something's doing in Gainesville, come on down and see. It's Gainesville where the wise men went from the center stable to revival tent. It's a hell of a place to be heaven sent. It's Gainesville bound for me. Something's brewing in Gainesville, wonder what it could be. Something's doing in Gainesville, come on down and see. It's Gainesville where the wise men went, turned the sinner's stable to revival tent. It's a hell of a place to be heaven sent. It's Gainesville bound for me. Something's doing in Gainesville, wonder what it could be. Something's doing in Gainesville, come on down and see. It's Gainesville where the wise men went, turned the sinner's stable to revival tent. It's a hell of a place to be heaven sent. It's Gainesville bound for me. Come on down, that's where I'm bound. There I'll be found. The person who started all of this commotion in Gainesville was actually a girl from the town of Clayton, Mary Hagler. While Mary was engaged to Joe Davidson, and before they had sexual relations, she became pregnant. Now, Joe was upset by this because he thought Mary was a nice girl from a nice southern family, and he was wondering how he would get his football jacket back from her. <laughs> when he fell into a deep sleep, while he was dreaming, he saw an angel. Joe Davidson, don't you be ashamed to marry Mary because she was made pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Now she'll give birth to a boy who you will call Jesus because he will deliver his nation from their errors. That's it. Get moving! So Joe did exactly as the angel instructed. He married his girl, and he decided to call the child Jesus. Of course, every aunt, cousin, and great-grandmother objected because no one had ever heard of the name Jesus before. Well, after the wedding, and when Mary was early in her ninth month, she and Joe had to take a trip to Atlanta because of an income tax audit. <laughs> On the way, about two miles outside of Gainesville, Mary let out a sound like Joe had never heard in his life. So Joe screeched into the Dixie Delight Motor Lodge and asked, where's the hospital? <laughs> then Mary had another series of contractions, so just after sunset, because the lodge was full, Joe and the motel manager broke down the door of an abandoned trailer out back, shooed away the dirt daubers, ran extension cord out for a small space heater, and delivered the little baby Jesus into the world. He was wrapped in a comforter and laid in an apple crate. <laughs> First string reporters flew in from all over the country to interview locals who had witnessed the event. The New York Times talked with a cattle farmer. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I had just gotten the cows back in for the night. When I hear this music, <laughs> la -de -da -de -da. 
I thought I was going to pass out. <laughs> then I heard someone call my name. Lyman. <laughs> Love, Joey. With a Y. So I look up. What I saw looked like about a hundred sons. They were singing a message to me, the gist of which was, If you want to see a baby born to God and a Georgia girl, you better get your tail on over to Gainesville. <laughs> right. When Jesus was born, it was during the time that Herod was the governor of Georgia. <laughs> Some scholars from the Orient came all the way to the state capital in Atlanta and asked Governor Herod where they could find the baby who was born to take his place. Herod pretended not to be shaken by such a question and sent the men on their way in hopes that they would obtain more information for him. Well, the three traveling scholars had no trouble finding Jesus because a star that they had seen in the Orient led them directly to the trailer. They bowed down and opened up the presents that they brought for him, a gold American Express card. <laughs> Some candles that put off a smell like fresh peaches and a large, expensive-looking bottle of Jade East. <laughs> In the midst of the festivities, Joe had another visit from the Lord's messenger. Psst! Hey, Joe, take your wife and the baby Jesus and highball it to Mexico. <laughs> because Herod's going to try to kill that baby. Get moving! Now, when the scholars did not come back to Herod, he decided that he had better call a meeting of his closest advisors. Oh, that so, referendum that we were... Listen, everybody, <coughs> listen to me just a second. Listen, everybody, listen, listen, listen. Have any of you seen a National Enquirer article about a virgin birth? <laughs> I understand that this virgin baby is supposed to be the future governor. If that's so, I'd like to shake his hand. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to shake it real good. <laughs> Any of you know his whereabout? Gainesville. <laughs> Gainesville. What makes you so sure? It's all prophesied in the Bible, Brother Harry. And you, Gainesville, and the state of Georgia, are by no means least in the Georgia delegation. <laughs> From you will come forth a governor who will wisely guide my chosen people. Thank you. <laughs> Brother Lamar. Well, I think we should celebrate this miraculous birth in our home state. So I have a lot of plans to make, if you will all excuse me. Thank you. Mabry, would you please stay behind just a moment? Thank you. Thank you all. Mabry, I can't compete with religious fanaticism. Now, I think that you and your boys owe me one or two favors down in Gainesville. You help me get this baby in a bud. All through the ages, the wise men and sages have said there are dirty deeds that simply must be done to keep society going and the benefits flowing. There's a simple necessity of hurting someone. It means strength and agility. Taking responsibility is the core of what leadership's really about. When the red blood starts coming, just think of it as plumbing. If you've got a problem, you must flush it out. But there's no one else with guts enough to be willing to kick 
their butts enough I'm the only one quite nuts enough to admit it They all hit it But I'm standing right here proud His head held high unbound I'll shout it right out loud He did it I did it He did it So, secret packs were made, orders given, and unsuspecting children paid with their lives for political maneuvers. Herod had Mabry see to it that on Sunday morning, a bomb got tossed into the nursery of a church where Jesus was supposed to be. Fortunately, Joe had taken Jesus to Mexico, so the plan failed to get him. But the explosion did kill 14 innocent infants and toddlers. It was a horrible sight that morning. The doctor had trouble convincing one mother that her child was dead. Talk about sweet baby. Mama is here. Hush by sweet angel. There's nothing to fear. Close your eyes, sweet darling, all through the night. Mama will hold you safe till the morning light. Then the words of the prophet Jeremiah had meaning. An explosion is heard in Gainesville. Great weeping and anguish. Rachel is crying for her children, and there is no consoling her. She has lost them. Walk by, sweet baby. Send their arms to the is here. To keep society going. Sweet angel. There's a nothing to fear. Close your eyes, sweet darling. Is the core of what leadership's really about. When the red blood starts coming, just think of it as safe. If you till the morning light, when the red blood starts coming, just think of it as safe. If you till the morning light. Now, when Herod did finally pass away, Joe moved his family back to Georgia, into the town of Valdosta. Every year, Jesus' parents attended the annual Sunday School Teachers Conference in Atlanta. And when Jesus was 12, they took the whole family. But that year, the crowd was four times as big because the National Sunday School Board decided to hold the conference in a brand new Civic Center facility. And nothing draws the Baptists like a new building. <laughs> After the meetings were over, Joe was trying to hustle the children into the car. Come on. Come on. Come on right now, right now, right now. Everybody in here, quick. Mary, go ahead, get back in the rear with the girls and the baby. Hurry up, Jody, Jim, Jesus, Simon. We have got a five-hour drive ahead of us. <laughs> Shoot. Somebody's been eating peanut butter and jelly in the car again. <laughs> it's all over the steering wheel. <laughs> Jesus, would you give me your handkerchief so I can clean this mess up? I'm going to find out who did this before I get to Stucky's. <laughs> I said, give me your handkerchief. Wait a minute. What do you mean he's not here? Come on, Jesus. Jesus? What does that boy think he's got me into now? <laughs> Jesus? 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 
hole. Jesus! Je hey, Lambry, how you doing? <coughs> Dr. Troy, That was a fine week of preaching, Dr. Troy. You held us in the palm of your hand. Listen, I hate to rush off like this, but we have just lost our oldest boy. Yes, sir. He knows his Bible backwards and forwards. Pardon me. Jesus, what? What Bible stories have you been telling, Dr. Troy? <laughs> He tells me that you're uh, quite a little preacher. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, of course. Jesus loves it at Valdosta First Church. Jesus, don't you think our new minister is a real man of God? I'm sure Jesus did not mean that, Dr. <laughs> Troy. <laughs> See you next year. What do you think you're doing? Going off, embarrassing your daddy like that. Now, what have you got to say for yourself? Son? I got to be about my father's business. Joe. Mary and Joe did not exactly catch on like that. <laughs> but Mary did remember all of these things that Jesus said and did and wrote them down faithfully in her baby book. <laughs> Jesus grew up to be a fine young man. He was intelligent and God liked him. The neighbors, however, had a different opinion. <laughs> The neighbors knew he really was a strange one. The gossip kept on building to a buzz. Though everybody knew he was different, nobody knew who or what he was. They say he's supposed to be the son of the Lord, but he's keeping just as quiet as a mouse. He's waiting for a call from the man upstairs, but he lives in a No steady job and no steady girl You ain't got time to worry about those little things in life When you're supposed to be out saving the world Now we all know adolescence is confusing But really, how confused can you get? He's been hanging around here for almost 30 years now and he hasn't even really started yet. Whoa, the questions kept on building in crescendo. They were asking him again and again. His father said, I can't understand you. His mama, she said simply, Ah, man. It is an easy growing up to be Jesus with no steady job. Supposed to be out saving the world. No, you ain't got time to worry about those little things in life when you're supposed to be out saving the world. <laughs> Mary and Joe took Jesus to a high society wedding put on by a man who practically owned Valdosta. At the reception. <laughs> the wine started to run low. So Joe said to Jesus, Boy, remember how you always could have made a killing off your lemonade stands cause you never ran out? Why don't you do that favor here for Mr. Carlisle Tatum? He's running out of wine. 
Jesus, do you have any idea how much work Mr. Tienum has contracted for my shop? <laughs> Mr. Tienum, I need some running water and a uh, pitcher. Sure. Uh, please, don't let anybody in here. <laughs> oh, Daddy, what am I going to do now? You give me the simple task of saving the world, and now I'm stuck here in Valdosta playing bartender. <laughs> I cannot just snap my fingers and do stunts when I so please. Or can I? Can I? Is <laughs> that? I'm sorry. I should have known better. I'll just go tell Mr. Tatum. I... <laughs> and Jesus made a potion coming from that faucet that kept the party going till 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> At this time, a new preacher showed up in the rural part of Georgia called John the Baptizer. If I told you he was coming to interrupt your dinner, what could you say except show enough? Jesus went to the riverside to hear him preach. If I told you he was coming for the losers and winners, what could you say except show enough? He heard John claiming that the famous virgin's baby of Gainesville was no rumor but an historical fact. If I told you he was coming for the veterans and beginners, like before you'd offer more of the same old stuff. People were coming to him from all over. Atlanta, Opelika, Aniana, Tue, Cordial, Tai Tai, Gluck. And when they owned up to their crooked ways, he dipped them in the Chattahoochee. If I told you he was coming to save all you sinners, what could you say except, you sons of snakes! You tell me who put the heat under you to run from the fury about to bust over your heads! You gotta reshape your lives because God's new order of the Spirit is confronting you. Hallelujah! You got to give me what? What? You got to give me what? What? You got to give me what? What? You got to give me proof, proof, proof that you had a changed life and do not feed yourself any of this we good church folk stuff. I'm telling you right now, if God wanted to, he could make good church folks out of this pile of rocks right here. Hallelujah! The chainsaw is set in the trunk of the tree, and every tree that is not performed some worthwhile function is going to be <laughs> chopped down, thrown into the fire, burn out. Hallelujah! I indeed dip you into water. I dip you into a changed life. But he is coming. He is coming after me. He is so much stronger than I. I ain't waiting to shine his shoes. Hallelujah! He's he's gonna dip you in the Holy Spirit and fire! His compound is already running, hallelujah! Can I hear a hallelujah? Hallelujah! hallelujah. He's gonna get this field a third going over, Come. He's gonna store the grain in the bin and burn up the stubble, hallelujah! Hallelujah! He's gonna do it! He's gonna! Praise God! Amen! I didn't see you standing there. Y'all look, there's God's lamb. That there is the world's sin bearer. He's the one I've been talking about. Saying there's a man coming from behind me who's gotten ahead of me because he was there before I was. 
And that's a pretty good trick. <laughs> hey, Jesus, it's time for the dipper to be dipped. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hey, 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 John, don't you talk like that. You have started my movement for me. The folks down home think that I ought to join the magician union. But you have prepared these people for the Son of God. Now let me be the dippy, and they'll know the ball is starting to roll. <laughs> then John consented, and as Jesus was coming out of the water, the sky split. The Holy Spirit descended like a dove alighting, and a voice spoke from the clouds. Mm -hmm. It said, This is my dear son. I'm proud of him. Shoot. <laughs> then Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the country to be given a test. Now, this test started with a 40 day fast for Jesus. 40 days, no food. So as you can well imagine, Jesus was extremely hungry. So pleased to meet you. May I make a suggestion? If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made into grits. <clears throat> Man doesn't live by grits alone. But on every word that drips from the lips of God. Oh. Hallelujah. Again, Jesus was taken to Atlanta, out onto the steeple of First Church. Hey, Jesus, I got a $500 bet going that says you really are the Son of God. Now, the Bible says that you have got angels saying to it. You don't stump your toe. Come on. Now, while everybody's looking, jump on down there and prove it. Hurry up. Push him, Orville. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is easy. <clears throat> Gerani. I just remembered. It also says you shall not test the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Still another time, Jesus was taken to an impressive looking office where a man in a three-piece suit spread out before him an atlas of the world. Jesus, I doubt that you are aware of the powers over the media that we possess here. But what I would like to make clear to you today is that if we do endorse your cause, we could have practically every member of the free world ready to support you. I know you. It's only your face that changes. No. I can't bring myself to let anybody run my cause except my father. Scram, Satan! <laughs> Hallelujah! I passed. <laughs> and at that, the devil left him. Then Angels appeared with a sack of chili cheese dogs for him. <laughs> One day, Jesus was walking by the river Ogeechee, and he saw two brothers, Simon, who was nicknamed Rock, and his brother Andy, in a boat casting out for bass because they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Y'all! <laughs> Cast your line with your left hand and you'll pull out a big one. <laughs> oh, Andy, no wonder we 
we hadn't caught any fish all night long because we had made a stupid assumption merely because we are right-handed people. <laughs> we ought to cast with our right hand. Oh my, how dumb we have been. <laughs> That's just what I need, some turkey telling me how to fish. <laughs> okay, Buster, this one's for you. <laughs> Shoot. I think I got one. <laughs> From that day on, Rock and Andy were hooked on Jesus. So, Rock and Andy dropped their fishing gear and walked with Jesus, and then he got the Zebedee boys to follow him, and the Johnson brothers, Phil and Nats from Bruton. And it was at this time that he met me, Matthew, at the IRS office. <laughs> Do you like this kind of work, Matthew? Sorry. Route 2, Valdosta. 420-620-227. No payment was necessary this year. No. 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 No, it wasn't under any level. It just wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> there was zero. Correct, no income. How do I get by? People are real generous to us. Look, just hold on a minute. I tell people about my father and make them well. And they do nice things for my followers and me. We have a wonderful time. No, I never went to med school. <laughs> my father makes people well. My father? God. Now, don't get so upset. <laughs> Calm down. Look, shh, shh, shh. Don't make, don't make us... Please don't shout. I know, I can explain the whole thing. If you would just calm down a bit, I can explain. Live my life. From that day. job and walk with Jesus. And then Phil and Bart followed. Jesus. And Tad and Jim Alphelius followed. Jesus. And Tom and Simon the Rebel followed. Jesus. And then there was Judd. We travel with Jesus all over North Georgia teaching in small towns spreading the good news of his movement to anyone, anytime, anywhere. One day, he went up on top of Stone Mountain and a crowd started to gather around him. It looked like there were people coming from all over the park. Soon there were about 500 people trying to talk to him, and within minutes, the crowd had nearly doubled. They were firing questions. Now, hey, Jesus, 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 I understand that you are going to take over the entire world. Well, who do you think you are? And who is behind you? <laughs> I am light. He who follows me shall never stumble in the darkness. People are behind me. Gentle, strong people 
are God's people. For they shall be known throughout the country as His partners. The deeply concerned are God's people, for they will see their ideas become reality. The generous are God's people, for they shall be treated generously. Excuse me. I am the Reverend Boyd Bissell <laughs> from Savannah Second Church. Thank you. <laughs> and you have just described the people in my congregation. They are as gentle, concerned, generous a lot as you could ask, Boa Toa. We are not followers of yours. Now, you're preaching exactly what the organized church has since way before you were born. What makes you think that you are any different? Nothing. Nothing at all, except that I am taking it further. <laughs> oh, they tell you an eye for an eye. They tell you a tooth for a tooth. Then they say, this is God's way, but I'm here to tell you the truth. Somebody looks at you in anger and walks you on the side of your head. Now do you go whack? Yeah. Do you hit them back? No, don't fight them. Invite them to walk the other side instead. Turn it around. Turn it around. Surprise them a little, start shifting the ground To get right side up, turn upside down Now is the time to turn it around They tell you to worry about yourself Before you help somebody else You just look out for number one That's what they say, but I've got a far better way Someone ask you for a ride to the bus stop I say don't let them down You just take them with a smile Go the extra mile Don't drive them at the bus stop Drive them all the way to town Turn it around, turn it around Surprise them a little, start shifting the ground Take it right side up, turn upside down Now is the time to turn it you got. They say possessions, not tenths of the law. And when they're talking money, that's not funny. They'll tell you it's worth dying for. Ha! I say when someone steals your shirt, let it go. Say take it if you please. Don't let them down. Just turn it around. Say take my shoes, take my pants, take my BVDs. Turn it Hey! <laughs> yeah. What I want to know is um, how your uh, movement is um, you know. <laughs> Financed. I take it you gotta eat and clothe yourself like the rest of us.
Everybody, look down the mountain at that meadow across the river. Look at those fields of flowers, how they are blossoming. They do not do any housework or sewing. But not one person on the 10 best stress list can compete with finery like those plants where. Now, if God so outfits the flowers of the field that are blossoming today and thrown into the fire for kindling tomorrow, isn't he going to do as much for you? When I look up, what should I see? It should be a rainbow on the far horizon, stretching towards eternity. When I look out, what should there be? The sun burning across my blue sky, shining down its light on me. Oh, surround me like your seasons. Why don't you rock, rock me in your streams? Oh, and promise, you promise me Should there be spirit on a mountain top bringing everybody peace? Oh, surround me like your season. Why don't you rock me in your street? One time, there was a white insurance salesman on his way to Nashville who ran out of gas. So he pulled off I-65 and flagged down the first car to come along. Unfortunately, it was a stolen one loaded with a gang of hoods. They stabbed him, robbed him, left him by the interstate for dead. The first person to come along was the president of a very large Southern denomination. When he saw the salesman, he said, Thank you, Lord. But in your sovereignty, you have appointed the state trooper to take care of these situations. <laughs> the next vehicle to come along is a $175,000 bus owned by a hot gospel quartet. 
<laughs> it had a wall of wall carpeting, two color TVs, and a Coca Cola machine. <laughs> they were brushing up their big hit for the year. Well, there ain't no busy signals on the hotline to God. There ain't no bad batteries in our Savior's hot rod. Well, when that group saw the There's always fertilizer in the Holy Spirit's sun. And there ain't no busy signals on the hotline. Signals on the hot, 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 hot line to God. Hey, we've had a lot of good announcements in this performance. Y'all want to hear the flip side? Y'all want to hear the flip side? No. We've got to get on the bus. We've got a concert to make. Hey! They want to hear the flip side. Spitball me, Lord, over the home plate of life. Want to strike out the devil, not strike out with my wife. Want the great umpire to call out the cause of care and strife. So spitball me, Lord. Spitball me, Lord. Spitball me, Lord, over the home plate of life. Spit. saw the salesman sprawled out by his car. They put the pedal to the metal. Now, well, clean up <laughs> they had an album signing session in Nashville. They weren't about to miss. Well, just minutes before the poor guy bled to death, here comes a black truck driver on his way to North Nashville to make a delivery deadline. And when he saw the white victim, he stopped, got out, wrapped the man in an old blanket, and took him off to the hospital. Now, you all think about that story and behave toward everybody on this planet like you would like for everybody on this planet to behave toward you. In a nutshell, that's everything I've got to say. By the time Jesus finished talking, there were over 5,000 people listening to him. And as he was making his way out of this crowd, an elderly woman touched him. Ooh, wow, who touched me? <laughs> Come on, I know somebody did. I thought the power go out of my leg. Gosh. Oh, well, don't be frightened. I just wanted to know who did it. Wait a minute. You have been crippled for 12 years? Well, stand up and walk my daughter. The faith of your touch has made you well. Miracle, miracle on Stone Mountain. The next day, the newspapers did not report a word about Jesus' philosophy or movement. They only wrote about... Miracle, miracle on Stone So Jesus thought we should all head over toward Alabama while this craze on his supernatural powers cooled off. However, a few days later, we were stopped by a United States senator who had his security guards take Jesus into his office. My four-year-old daughter just died. You are, you're coming home with me to bring my daughter back to life. 
Well, there was a crowd of dignitaries in the room where the girl's body was lying. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Come on, honey. Sing. Love the Lord. Love the Lord your, your God. God. With all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. How about some breakfast? The next week, we were on the cover of Time, Newsweek, and the U.S. News and World Report. <laughs> We were also the top subject for investigative committees of the FBI, the CIA, and the EEAW. Electronic evangelists of the airwaves. <laughs> Baby, if you're pure enough, maybe if you're sure enough, baby, if you're mature enough, you can have a blind date with God. With God. Good morning. Thank you, Timmy and Tanya. <laughs> We're so fortunate to have Timmy and Tanya here with us this morning. As they are leaving next Saturday to sing praises to God on another Total Spirit Ocean Liner cruise. A few reservations are left for next fall's round the world pilgrimage to the Holy Land and Hong Kong. For more information, write Bible Holiday, Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> this morning, an answer to the mail that we have received inquiring about Jesus, may I say, that if there is any truth to the extraordinary reports of his ha, healings, it's due to the fact, the fact that he is in league with a negative supernatural force. Otherwise, why would he do it for free? <laughs> Jesus simply continued on the circuit of small towns, teaching and healing every kind of suffering and misery. But eventually the work got so massive that he decided to train some of us to become leaders. And one day he asked 12 of us to meet him at the conference room and the Unadilla Travel Lodge. Good to see you. Do you all know one another? Uh, this is Rock, of course, and his brother, Andy. Jim and Jack, Mr. Zebedee's boys. Phil and Bart. Matt the Revenueer, Tad, Simon the Rebel, all right! Hey! <laughs> Jim Alphelius, Tom, hey, and Judd. How are you today, Judd? Okay. <laughs> for just a few moments, I would like for you all to kneel here. It's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> That's fine.
this moment. You are receiving my power. You will go out in my name and challenge people to reshape their lives. Now, people are going to be frightened of you and what you have to offer. They'll trump up false charges against you and attack you, even in church. They'll drag you before legislative committees and high courts where you will have to defend yourselves before them and the whole world while it watches you. Okay, now take your places again and memorize what I'm about to say to you. Matthew, write it down. <laughs> we are not going to be some traveling medicine show. We're going to show everybody how God's new order of the Spirit is confronting us, and we are going to do it in Atlanta. This year at the annual Believe in the Bible Society Convention, they are going to see to it that I am turned over to the authorities of that city and... Uh, and lynched because they're so afraid of our new way of life. Now, I'll give my enemies the weekend to dance all over my grave. However, Sunday, I will reappear <laughs> with a brand new tune that will have people dancing all over the world. Atlanta, Atlanta, the annual Believe in the Bible Society Convention. Right. Let's get moving. We're going to Atlanta for the whole down. We're going to Atlanta, don't you know? We're going to Atlanta for the bright light showdown. Sure enough, it's going to be a show. Seem to be. Oh, Daddy, what if we started? Please, make them see the light before I get to Atlanta. Make this crew that I'm sending out like a team, a unit. One. And maybe the world will come together like them. And maybe, just maybe, there won't have to be a lynching. What does Atlanta mean to me? What does Atlanta seem to be? The fears I feel are never gone. The things I know are coming on are not so nice to look upon so closely. That's what Atlanta means to me. It's time to take it to the big time To try out a message at the top Our salvation train is chugging right down the right line Ready to do anything but stop what does Atlanta mean to me? What does Atlanta seem to be? He means being what I'm supposed to be. That's what Atlanta means to me. We're going to Atlanta for the whole day. What does Atlanta mean to me? What does Atlanta seem to be? He means being what I'm supposed to be. That's what Atlanta means to me.
we were not ready. <laughs> we flunked our very first assignment, a simple demon exorcism. Jesus said that while he went up into the Smoky Mountains for a private prayer meeting, that we had all better go back to Valdosta. Well, on our way down there, we took a little fishing trip. We were all out in the middle of the lake when we saw the sky turn yellow. And a tornado started forming. We thought we were goners. <laughs> then in a flash, the sky turned as blue as the morning glory. <laughs> Rock says, I swear. That is the biggest duck I ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's me, Jesus. <laughs> Look, no skis. that you could do this too if you really wanted to. Yeah, rock, rock you do it. Sure you can. Yeah, Come on. Right. Who wants to see rock? Wagga wagga. Yeah. All right, that's right. Get the other foot. Oh. Rock, you have to let go of the side before it works. <laughs> of course, it's crazy. Now do it. Come on, rock. That's right. Oh, rock. Good, Rock. Come Good. On, now take a step. Come on, listen to the They're going crazy. One foot in front of the other. Rock, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's That's drowning. <laughs> After Rock sunk, Jesus looked so defeated that no one even spoke around him. We traveled to Valdosta in perfect silence. A few weeks after our arrival there, everybody started wondering what the hometown celebrity was doing back. Was he in trouble? Did he run out of money? Well, when Jesus got that kind of a reception from his own people, he seemed to cut off contact with everybody. Jesus, Joe brought your mother and your brothers here to see you. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? The person who does the will of my spiritual father is my mother and my brother and my sister. Right. Mr. and Ms. Davidson, perhaps tomorrow would be a better time for your meeting. <laughs> well, what can Mary and Joe do but turn around and go back home? That night after supper, while Mary was doing the dishes, she watched Joe sitting out in the backyard, and for a few moments they each had time to think about their son. You are still my boy. Even though you're gone now We have your memory Lingering on Boyish laughter Rings out clear And it seems you must be near Footsteps sound and I look around and I look to see if you are here. You still claim a part 
of that hopeful place I call my heart Hopeless is a word I never learned Though my head knows what is true That we've seen the very last of you my heart won't listen It just keeps missing That loving boy That it once knew You will always be You will always be Somewhere Deep inside of me Yes, I know it, I can feel it. I ain't no prophet claiming doom now. Somehow just never learned the knack. You have a boy, you give him room now. And then there's nothing else. At this time, the governor of Georgia was Harvey. Now, he was a nephew of the Herod who tried to kill Jesus. Well, one day, John the baptizer came right out and said, Harvey, you son of a snake. Amen. You weren't content just to wallow around in bed with your brother's wife. Tim, you stole her and you married her up. Right. Now you're going straight down, looking at splits, fast as a jackrabbit, don't pass, go more filled with sin than a chick was spin a fucking to hell. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so Harvey's wife nagged at him day and night until he arrested John, and then she made him get rid of that old-time religion man. Well, when Jesus heard about this, he started gearing up his public ministry again by doing some really spectacular miracles that made his reputation skyrocket. For example, he takes five boxes of Nabisco's, two cans of sardines, and he feeds 5,000 people. <laughs> well, when this kind of action started, we knew it was old times, but better. Then one afternoon, he called us together. Boys, I noticed in last night's newspaper an article by a reporter who said that I am not Jesus at all, but that I am probably Jeremiah. This morning, on a TV talk show, a Bible scholar argued that I am Moses. I almost believed him. <laughs> so 
I got to wondering, who do you say that I am? Rock, don't look at that paper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> of course. Oh, don't worry about that. That is simple. Who do you say that I am? <clears throat> Who do you say that I am? We covered that, didn't we? <laughs> Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? <laughs> Just give me five more seconds. <laughs> oh, cut it out! <laughs> Wait a minute! <gasps> of course, you are the living Lord's man. You are the Son of God. You are beautiful. Simon Rock Johnson, put her there. I'm going to give you the keys to the city of God. Now, you remember that when they take me to Atlanta to be lynched. Jesus, I'm real sorry, but you have got to hush up all of this lynching nonsense. We have got your takeover all figured out. You see, Matthew is going to organize us into a nonprofit corporation. <laughs> and Andy's got an old high school friend that has made a big time out in Hollywood, so we're going to get them to do a TV special on you. And Tad has already started organizing your followers to vote for politicians who will support your policies for world peace once they're in office. We gotta get organized. We gotta get smart. We gotta go get her act together before we start. Off of the drawing board, down onto the street. That's right. Out of the menu stage and, and into the meat. <laughs> we gotta get unionized. Yeah. We gotta get trained. That's a good idea. Form a company and, and find a name. Off of the theory now and more of the same. Off of the practice field and into the game. We're hoping that you're hearing us to get our message through. But if we're really serious, we're not doing enough of the kind of stuff. We gotta get rough and tough enough. We're not doing enough of the kind of stuff. We gotta get rough and tough enough to do. Doodly doo. Ain't that something? Speak to me, Jesus. You don't look real keen on all this. <laughs> I didn't come to star on a TV show or preside over some corporation. And I did not come to lead the political peace movement of all time. I came to split a boy from his daddy and a bride from her husband and a sister from her sister. Anybody who puts his parents or children above me is not my man. Anybody who puts his possessions above me is not my man. And anybody who will not accept his own lynching and share my life is not my man. Oh. Get out of here, Satan. Well, none of us could even look Jesus in the face after that. But then the very next day, he burst into our rooms and said, <laughs> it is time to shoot on into the big peach. 
And that was the only explanation we ever had. He bought an old beat-up BW convertible and he made out Highway 85 in it while we marched beside. Other folks started getting the idea and taking their coats off to make a carpet for him right down the interstate. Others are cutting on magnolia blossoms and japonica blooms and throwing them into the air. Huge mobs came, some going in front, some following behind. They were shouting, hooray for our leader! Hooray for our leader! It's been a long, long time waiting, you know. It's been a long, long road, we gotta go. While time floats slow and fast, the world kept going fast. But I know I'm gonna love it while it lasts. It's an old, old dream we've been dreaming this night. Hoping someday we see the light. Trying to imagine the size. Praying we were doing it right. And then the day came up and now that the dream shines bright. Jesus stopped at first church. The mobs gathered for a miracle. They worked up to a fever pitch, expecting him to heal, make money out of thin air, announce his takeover of the government. Instead, he walked across the street to a construction site, borrowed a sledgehammer, and headed into the church. He went to the center courtyard where there was a beautiful shopping mall of fine religious gifts, and he proceeded to smash it to pieces. He marched quickly up the hall where the church offices were, broke down the door, personally pitched out the finance committee, burned the investment in the endowment records, and scrapped the long-range expansion plans. <laughs> When Jesus broke in, the clerks and the storekeepers started to flee, but because the minister of education had thrown a burglar alarm, that burglar alarm system locked every door in the building and trapped the entire ministerial staff in their own fellowship hall. It didn't take Jesus long to find them. You, sons of snakes, my house should be known for its commitment to God, and you turn it into a baker's club that a religious racket! Then the blind people and the broken people and the young people started gathering into the church, and he was making the needy among them well. He was saying, come on, come on to me. Everybody that's had a belly full of emptiness, you get in the harness with me, for my harness is practical. My assignment is joy. This is a song that needs no explanation. This is a song I hope the time would bring. Jubilation. And this is a song I call my Everybody say 
to touch his dream just one time. I know I'll never ever get this close again. Jubilation. And everybody wants to feel that feeling sometimes. That's why I don't want to dare to come. Outside, the crowds felt cheated. They broke into a riot, throwing beer bottles, trampling one another, trying to get inside. They wanted Jesus to come out and lead an attack on the government offices next. When he didn't, many of the same people who had cheered his arrival started calling him a fake and joined the factions against him. The very same day, the annual Believe in the Bible Society convention got into full swing in downtown Atlanta. So the city was crammed with ministers and politicians out to sway the public. After the meeting, all of the board met in the backyard of Dr. Caiaphas, who was the executive board director for the Believe in the Bible Society. He's a dangerous, dangerous man. Gotta stop him while we can. The rabble in the street are falling at his feet. Gotta keep him quiet. Don't wanna start another riot. Who can we trust? What will become of us? He's a dangerous, dangerous man. Gotta stop him while we can. The rebel in the street. Stop him. Are falling at his feet. Gotta stop him. Gotta keep him quiet. Gotta stop him. Don't wanna start it on the right. Gotta stop him. Who can we trust? Gotta stop him. What will become of us? I appreciate you taking this time out of your meeting, Dr. Caiaphas, to meet with me privately. Yes, my father was Simon Iscariot. Oh, sure, I knew you knew Daddy. Everybody knew Daddy. He was one of the Believe in the Bible Society old-timers. <laughs> I, um, I don't know how to put this. I knew exactly what I wanted to say before I came here, and now everything is... <laughs> okay. I think Jesus needs some help, personal help. Psychological help. You see, lately he keeps on harping about, will you promise me that this is just between you and me? 
Lately, he keeps on saying that he is going to take over by being murdered. And then, when everybody knows that he is six feet under, he is going to come back to life. Yes, I know. Now, he thinks that I have got a special part in all of this. Oh no, he's never said it in so many words because the others would get jealous. That's why I have got to do something to stop him. God, you don't know how good it is to talk to somebody who understands. Pardon me, did you say tonight? Okay. As soon as I find out where we're eating, I'll call you. We'll work out the details. I know you people and the believe in the Bible would know exactly what to do. Judd, oh Judd, where did you go? What you been doing, nobody knows. With your pockets a jingling and your smile coming slow. That night after supper, after everybody else had left the restaurant where we were eating, Jesus takes a big biscuit, rips it into shreds, and then he says to us, you better bite into this. It's my body. You better swallow this. It's my blood. Hey, what's going on? Well, this don't make much sense. He's been talking once again to his pappy. Wine, his blood, biscuit, his body. Here we go again. Shh. Go, go ahead and drink, drink it, boys. boys. It will make him happy. Then we all went out into a rock garden behind the restaurant. Jim, Jack, Rock, come here a second. I know it's late, but I want you to... I want you here. Because it's coming true with me. Like it says in Scripture, he's going to be thrown in with the violent. No, everything is not all right. Thank you. I appreciate this more than you know. Daddy? Relieve me of this agony. Only, I want it to be your decision. I don't want you to do anything you don't want to do. Daddy. Daddy. Oh, Chad, it's you. How did... Who are your friends here? Chad, did you just kiss the Son of Man goodbye? Oh, buddy, do you realize what you have just started? Judd, oh Judd, where will you go? Now that you've done it, now that he knows I'm glad I don't carry the weight 
of your soul. In the morning, Dr. Caiaphas brought Jesus to the present governor, Pilate. You know, I could throw the book at you. Vagrancy, destruction of public property, inciting to riot, running a fast food joint, serving 5,000 a day, no health permit. <laughs> what do you think we ought to do? Dorothy Jean, would you bring me one sack of that mail in here? I wanted Jesus and these reporters to see. Now, let me ask you one question. Are you the head of the church? You are. Does that mean that you are accepting their accusations against you? Cat got your tongue. Just dump it on the floor, Dot. Now, that's a good bit of hate mail, right? Well, it's uh, one sack of about 30. We've got like it downstairs. And who do you think it's about? Okay. What seems smart to me, Jesus, is that we put you for a while in a small prison in South Georgia so that these boys from the press can let the publicity cool down a bit. Then I will hold a trial. maybe give you a pardon. Whatever. God! Now, does that sound fair? Thank God for Governor Pilot. At last we've got a guy who shows he cares. Your silence is beginning to unnerve me. Take him downstairs. Boy, I'll tell you one thing, Dr. Caiaphas. I don't think he is a religious racketeer. He knows too well how to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was very good to see you again, too. Doc, get my Uncle Mabry on the phone. That's right, Gainesville. Thank God for Governor Pilot. At last we've got a guy who shows he cares. Thank God for Governor Pilot. At last we've got a friend who's always there. Mabry? Mabry, can you hear me? Well, I thought you might like to know that Jesus is going to be taken to the Lee Correctional Institution. Leesburg. Thursday night, about 9 o'clock. Down Route 214. We have had our limits in the past in the top Well, that old bum Herod and his nephew Harvey, they should have been shot. Having news like that in government Makes Georgia not so hot That's why we're so lucky With this new guy that we've got Thank God for Governor Pilot At last we've got a guy Who shows he cares Thank God for Governor Pilot At last we've got a friend Who's always there He fixes potholes Kisses babies You know I love the way his wife dresses Yeah boy Friday afternoon, we got the bad news. As Jesus was being taken to Leesburg, and as he was coming down the two-lane, right outside of town, a Klansman jumped out of the woods and shot out the front right tire of the patrol car. Then it was a mob several hundred strong against two highway patrolmen. They dragged him into the woods and stripped him naked. They flogged him using one of those cat of nine tails that has bits of rock and glass in it wrapping it around his body and whipping it off 39 times because it was said that 40 would kill a man. They strung Jesus up by the neck and choked him off as slowly as possible.
You just come along And now we find you gone Give us one more try One more tomorrow All we need is time Sure could use some time Can't you stay a while for us to follow? Yes, I know you have a new life coming That's what you figured out But everybody's lost now Everybody's lost now Everybody's lost now What's it all about? Maybe we'll come with you Maybe we will stay Maybe we'll just watch a while Then wander It seems like all the good things that you've planned will drift away. But maybe they will last this time. I wonder. Yes, I know we have a new life coming. That's what you figured out But everybody's lost now Everybody's lost now Everybody's lost now What's it all about? What's it all about? Late that afternoon, a well-to-do citizen from the white suburb of Sylvan Hill obtained permission from Pilate to have the body. So the man had an undertaker friend take the body and lock it in his family tomb under a huge slab of marble. We thought we'd seen the last of Jesus. Pilate decided to organize an enormous number of guards to watch the grave. He got the FBI, the National Guard, the Highway Patrol. I mean, there were some big mothers watching that, too. <laughs> On Sunday morning, along about the break of day, a lot of commotion started to happen. Here comes Mary, the one from Mobile, and the other Mary and Joanna to put some flowers next to the gravesite. What do you know? An angel comes out of the sky. It looked like his clothes were made of lightning. His face was just like snow. He flew past the police helicopters, smashed against the marble slab, turns to the ladies and says, get moving. I know you came here to see Jesus who is lynched. He's back from the dead. Well, they took out of there like three cats and long tails and a room full of rocking chairs. And who should they meet on the way but Jesus? And he said, Howdy. Y'all quit being so scared. Tell my brothers and sisters that I'm going to meet them on the mountainside I chose in Alabama. Well, that night, he nearly gave everybody at the Big R Barbecue cardiac arrest when he walked through, and I mean through the door. <laughs> then he ordered a cup of coffee, a big piece of pecan pie, ate it right in front of everybody. That really put away their doubts. Meanwhile, back at the gravesite, the guard finally organized their attack on the angel. It might have worked if he hadn't already disappeared. So the guard told the sergeant, and the sergeant told the general, and the general phoned pilot. Right away, Pilate and his henchmen started concocting a story about Jesus' students stealing the body after the men guarding the tomb fell asleep. All 100 of them just taking a cat nap in unison. 
The first time I saw Jesus after his lynching was with the rest of the disciples. We had gathered from all over the southeast and had come to Alabama. Jesus did meet us on the mountainside. And he said, <sighs> it worked. It worked. I am here. Now all of the power and the wisdom of heaven and earth has been given to me. And I pass them right on to you. You go out and you share them with all nations and with all races. Welcome all people into my father's family because I'll be hanging right in there with you all the time up to the last inning. -wee! Now if a man tried to take his time on earth and prove before he died what one man's life could be worth, well, I wonder what would happen to this world. Oh, yes, I wonder. Yes, I wonder. Selling books and flowers Could they be the last ones With a semblance of a dream If we say there's no one out there We say we're going nowhere Can we open the question Is this all that is me? Now if a man tries Now if a man tries To take his time on earth To take his time on earth And prove before he dies And prove before he dies But one man's life Thank you. 